Hey everyone, I am back today with a CPC review of the anesthesia section. It is not a huge section, so this is going to be a small review, but there are some definite key concepts that we want to go over. But as usual, we're going to start with what is in the CPT book of the anesthesia section. Now, if you're new to this channel, hi, I'm Victoria. I'm a medical coder, auditor, educator, and content creator. And on my channel, I provide tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you be successful in a medical coding career. If you haven't already, highly encourage you to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can get alerts when I post new episodes. I've been doing these little condensed reviews of medical coding and they follow more so the CPC curriculum. They're probably also good for the CCSP, for a HEMA, but let's start out with going through what is in this section of CPT. And it's not a big section. It's in my CPT manual for 2021. This tiny little blue anesthesia section can barely probably see it there on the camera. Starting, of course, with the anesthesia guidelines, and I'll go over those pertinent components. So anesthesia is a state in which a patient does not feel pain, and all of these CPT codes that we have are kind of organized by anatomic location. So we're going to start at our top. We usually start with the top of the body, so the head. We got the head, the neck, the thorax, intrathoracic, spine and spinal cord, upper abdomen, lower abdomen, perineum, the pelvis, the upper leg, except for the knee, and that's important that we have a separate section for the knee. And then the knee and the popliteal area, the lower leg, so the stuff below the knee, which includes our ankle and it includes our foot. After that, we're kind of going back up now. We're going down to our extremities, our shoulder and axilla, our arm and elbow, and then our forearm, wrist, hand, and then we have some anesthesia codes that are specific to radiological procedures, to burn excisions or debridements, obstetric anesthesia, and then miscellaneous procedures. Time is a big concept in anesthesia, not just calculating the total time, but then converting it into units. When we calculate anesthesia time, we're starting with when that anesthesiologist starts preparing that patient in either that operating room or surgical area. And it ends when that anesthesiologist is no longer in personal attendance, when that patient is wheeled in for post-operative supervision. So when we look at our total anesthesia time, as far as when we're calculating it into units to bill it out, the AMA and the ASA recommend that one unit of time equal 15 minutes. So let's say we're billing for an anesthesia service for an hour, that's going to be four units because 15, 30, 45, 60 for one hour. So if we're billing two hours, it would be eight units, etc. So one unit of time in most cases is going to be 15 minutes. Now, however, there are different insurance carrier policies on this. So when you're coding for anesthesia in a real life setting, you may have certain circumstances where the units are calculated differently for certain insurance programs. Now, when you're taking that certification exam, we are sitting for your CPC, they're going to consider anesthesia units to be 15 minutes. So remember that for your exam. The physical status modifiers, where can you find these? They're an easy one to find. They're one that's listed right in that flap of your CPT book, anesthesia, physical status modifiers right there. And there are six levels consistent with the American Society of Anesthesiologists, the ASA. So we go from a P1, which is a normal healthy patient to a P6, which is a declared brain dead patient whose organs are being removed for donor purposes. And then we have tiers for basically everything in between. So for example, a P3 is a patient with severe systemic disease. We use these modifiers to distinguish between that complexity of that patient. And in consideration of that complexity, we also have certain qualifying circumstances. So patients that maybe are of a severe age or have other factors where we're going, hey, this is adding a lot more complexity and then potentially is going to add on some additional reimbursement for that added complexity of the case. So we have four different add-on codes for anesthesia for those complicating circumstances. 99100, 99116, 99135 and 99140. Our 99100 is for our patients of a delicate age. They're either younger than one year old or older than 70 years old. 
99116 is a complication because they are utilizing total body hypothermia. 99135 is complicated because we're using controlled hypotension. And then our 99140 is anesthesia that's complicated by an emergency condition. And that emergency condition needs to be specified in the documentation. So an emergency is defined as one in which any delay in that treatment would cause a significant threat to life or limb of the patient. Now let's go through a couple of cases. So in this one, what is the modifier that's used for a patient who is declared brain dead and whose organs are being removed for donor purposes? So we have four options, F1, P1, F6, or P6. Now where do we find those modifiers? Well, they're just, they're right here. So if you get a question on an anesthesia modifier, they're gonna be right there in your book. You can pluck them right out of that, that inside flap. So our P1 is our normal healthy patient, and then our P5 is our more bound patient. P6, we can see here, is a declared brain dead patient whose organs are being removed for donor purposes, and that's what it says here. Patient who their organs are being removed for donor purposes, right? We're looking just for the modifier and it's patient who's declared brain dead, right? Which is our P6. So that would be that answer for that one, the P6. That was pretty easy, right? So as long as you know where those physical status modifiers are, you'll do really well on that anesthesia question if they ask you about a modifier. Now, what about this? Anesthesia for a diagnostic arthroscopic procedure of the knee joint. So there's a couple of different ways that we could look this up. We could just look at these different codes because, you know, the anesthesia section isn't really that big. Or we can look at in our index right here, anesthesia. So alphabetically anesthesia. And then what are we going to look through next? What should we maybe look through next? So knee, I'm thinking. So anesthesia of the knee. Now, if we look up knee, there's a lot of different codes here, right? whole bunch of different anesthesia knee uh, conditions. But what if we looked at a different one? What if we maybe went under arthroscopic? So maybe since this doesn't break down from knee to arthroscopic, what if we start at arthroscopic? So we can go there. We can go to anesthesia, arthroscopic. So arthroscopic procedures, and then we have knee. So we have two code selections here, 01, 382-01440. And it looks like only one of them is one of our options. So our option A is our 01382. So chances are good that's the right one. But should we verify it in our, in our CPT book? Yes, let's take a look at that code. All right, so here we are in our knee and popliteal section in the anesthesia 01382. And it says anesthesia for diagnostic arthroscopic procedures of the knee joint. And is that what we did here? It says anesthesia for a diagnostic arthroscopic procedure of knee joint. Yes, that is exactly what we did. So for this one, it is our option A. Now this one, it's testing us on our calculation of anesthesia time. So anesthesia start time is reported at 8 14 a.m. and the surgery began at 8.26. Surgery finished at 8.18 and the patient was turned over to the PACU at 9.29 a.m., which was reported as the ending anesthesia time. What is the anesthesia time reported? So this one is testing us on our knowledge of anesthesia time. And what did we say about anesthesia time? It starts when the anesthesiologist starts preparing the patient and ends when the patient is wheeled off to care for, they're gonna be in that post-operative supervision. So where do we start in this? Anesthesia start time is reported at 8.14. Surgery began at 8.26. Well, the anesthesia start time is when the anesthesiologist starts preparing them, right? So that start time is gonna be what? That 8.14. And then the surgery began, surgery finished at 8.18. Does the anesthesia end when the patient is ending surgery? No, it ends when they are going to recovery, when the anesthesiologist releases them for post-operative management through other care. So they're going to the PACU at 929. So 929 is going to be our end time. So we're going to start when they start preparing them, 814, end at 929. So which of our options here is 814 and 929? So A is 814 to 918, nope. Uh, 826 to 918, nope. C is 814 to 929, which is what we are calculating. Now, if they give you the minutes, you might have to do a little bit of math here. So 814 to 929, and you would need to know that the difference between this time, 
814 and 929 is one hour and 15 minutes. So if we were to take 814 plus 115, it would lead us to the 929. And an hour and 15 minutes is equivalent to the 75 minutes. So that case, it would be yes, our option C, the 8.14 a.m. to 9.29 a.m., which is 75 minutes or one hour and 15 minutes. I really hope you enjoyed this review. And don't forget, this is part of a playlist that I am doing for reviews for those who have already studied to refresh on certain section of the medical coding curriculum. You can find that entire playlist right over here. I will see you guys in the next video. And until then, just keep on coding on.